Fortnite's most recent patch dropped yesterday after putting out a hotfix the day before on Tuesday to make Team Rumble more playable by removing the Boombo from that particular mode only. You know, that weapon that somehow uses shotgun ammo even though it's an explosive weapon that has an easy mode trajectory when aimed in in order to take away any of the fun that physics majors would have had in trying to calculate the Coriolis effect due to gravity on the projectile. Of course, this decision was met with criticism on Reddit about eliminating a weapon from a game mode because of Epic claiming it was too powerful, yet this line of thinking doesn't apply to the actual competitive game modes. Maybe the people at Epic actually enjoy the giant bubble orgy that the end games of arena matches turn them to. People do have their fetishes after all. Anyways, in spite of removing one explosive annoyance, they've actually added in another with this patch with the proximity grenade launcher, aka the XM25. Unlike the Boombo, it actually uses explosive ammo in rare and legendary variants. It's even more easy mode than the Boombo as the projectile will explode automatically whenever it is within a half tile proximity of an opponent dealing 67 or 70 damage respectively. If you're such a window licker that you somehow happen to not aim anywhere near the vicinity of an opponent, it will explode after 10 seconds or once movement of the projectile has stopped. I don't understand how Epic thought that this weapon was a good idea after they vaulted the guided rocket not once but twice because it was too good and people actually had to interact with it unlike this auto exploding rocket. In the last patch they added the storm flip item because apparently there weren't enough dome shaped objects in the game already but this patch brings about some tweaks to it, like having the item deal a flat 5 damage per second instead of basing it on the current storm circle, and having its availability reduced, which is a theme for the only other changes in this patch, with the drop rates of shield, shotguns, and the infantry rifle going up, as well as the heavy assault rifle and turret trap going down. The patch also brings about a new limited time mode called Horde Rush, which Epic finally got the hint to put the AI in its own playlist so it doesn't get in the way of the actual survive and eliminate objective. I'd assume that this addition is to entice people into throwing down money on the save the world part of the game by a shooing the survival aspect of the battle royale in favor of farming fiends by defending different areas of the map eventually to get to the final AI boss while racking up points for your squad. Unfortunately, in typical epic fashion, they've currently disabled the mode due to some issues with it, so you can't even play it at the moment in order to complete a new set of challenges which have been revealed for that particular game mode. There are seven challenges to complete, including winning a match without being eliminated, aka embarrassed that you got killed by a bot, eliminating five gold brutes that are party assisted by your squad, dealing 5,000 damage to spawn obelisks that you should be doing anyway to make it easier with less AI running around the screen, collecting 10 score multipliers, eliminating 20 poison fiends or exploding brutes from at least 5 meters away, which is how they should be killed if you're going to avoid these area of effect attacks, a stage challenge to win matches with a team score of 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, and 200,000, finally eliminating 500 horde members with headshots. Complete that last challenge and get this loading screen here, which is actually much cooler than the week 6 loading screen you get for completing all the challenges. Challenges. However, if you do complete all seven challenges, you're going to get this fiend wrap. Speaking of challenges, the week six ones have gone live, and for players that don't have access to their mom's credit card, they are as follows. Dealing 500 damage to opponents with SMGs, which is tougher now that the burst SMG basically replaced the suppressed one due to redundancy, yet here we are with yet another explosive launcher weapon being added with the last patch. Contradictorily enough, a three-stage hotspot challenge. First, searching for three chests at the gold locations, searching three ammo boxes there, and then getting one elimination in the drop zone and a stage landing challenge first for lucky landing if you end up going afk on a southward moving bus then loot lake if you've forgotten what it looks like after all of the design changes has gone through then shifty shafts if a sparse spread amount of shite loot is what you desire frosty flights to get one of those ballers after realizing that the planes aren't in the game anymore and lastly haunted hills if you still have some fort fight challenges to complete at that location because there's no other reason to go there for people that did pay for a character dangle the tasks are dealing 200 damage to vehicles driven by an opponent which means you'll need multiple ballers because their health was lowered to 150 in a previous patch. Using a vehicle in two different matches, which is probably to help out those people trying to do that first challenge. Using that newly reworked storm flip in three different matches and finally eliminating three opponents at the block or fatal fields, which you have to hope is in the team rumble circle. Complete all of these annoying ways to play and you'll get this loading screen here, giving off a rainy cyberpunk 2077 vibe to ride the coattails of their E3 presentation. Speaking of E3, the conference goers did get their their hands on an early version of a prop hunt game mode that features a previously leaked propomatic weapon allowing your character to change into different objects around the world. After Call of Duty grabbed the 50v50 idea from Fortnite, it seems that Epic is returning the favor here by grabbing the limited time mode first made famous in Gmod but has been a mainstay in Call of Duty for the past several titles. In other news from E3, Netflix also confirmed a Fortnite Stranger Things collaboration that currently has a Scoops Ahoy ice cream shop in the Mega Mall which will be a prominent location in the upcoming third season of the 
show. It remains to be seen what else is in the works for the feature, though. Unfortunately, that's all of the leaks I got for you because Epic has recently started encrypting more and more beepity bops that are used for data mining, upcoming events, and new items, since the assets aren't able to be viewed anymore. For people that don't like spoilers, this is a good thing to not know what's coming and to enjoy the surprises that Epic works, or should I say, overworks themselves on. However, for content creators that like to live stream themselves staring at Loot Lake for a volcano event that's actually three seasons later, it's going to mean that they'll actually have to figure out how to be entertaining. What a fucking tragedy. I'm a person that doesn't really seek out breaking news or the latest rumors about certain games because I'm not one of those people that hype myself up about shit. I'm just a cynical douche canoe. I'll just wait until things are actually available to use before I give a shit. But I know that there are many people out there that do want to know everything about the things that they enjoy. I think with having so many leaks and constantly trying to quench that thirst for new things has led to a lot of crunch with video game development. And there's way too much emphasis on give me more, give me more, like little children that need the latest toy to play with in spite of having a goddamn chest full of them. Although prior to EA Play, Battlefield data mines are the only thing keeping me feeling positive about the future of the game's Tides of War live service buzzword, but that's a different scenario than what I described with being someone that needs something new all the fucking time. That's just because the game is an empty shell of a product, and this actually fulfills that promise of them putting shit in later. Anyways, what do you think about the new weapon and a prop hunt mode coming soon? I've been Dosh Schwanz 27 out like the Boston Bruins. Until next time.